Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be going over implied volatility for options. And what I'll be demonstrating in this tutorial is splitting our implied volatilities into deciles for SPY options. And for each expiration, I'll be calculating the one standard deviation expected move depending on the number of days left to expiration. And we're gonna try and see if we can find any patterns. So these are some of the packages we're going to require. I'm sourcing some functions to get stock data or in this case, ETF closing prices for the SPY. So if you're following along or want to replicate the script, for lines five through 10, I'm requiring the closing prices for the SPY, and I'm also importing all the SPY options that I have in my database, and all of my options data I got from the CBOE, and I'll leave a link down in the video description where I have a tutorial on how to scrape this data. All right, so for the back test, I'm gonna focus on days to expiration, ranging from one to 30. And then I'll pass in that sequence as a list into this function. So if we open this up, depending on the number of days to expiration I pass in, I will subset my options data to only those options that match my criteria. I will then split it into calls and puts. Now that I have this subset, I will pass in the unique cases of expiration dates. And for each of the expiration dates, I will find the difference between the stock close that day and the strike. And I will return the strike with the lowest difference which essentially is the at the money strike. After I subset that data, I'm just gonna require my implied volatility, the expiration date, the strike, the mid price for the option, our theta, our stock close, the flag, which in this case is a call, the current trading day, and the number of days left to expiration. Now to calculate the expected move, I'm gonna multiply our implied volatility by the stock close or the underlying close, multiplied by the square root of the days to expiration divided by 365, and that will give us our standard deviation. Now that we have our standard deviation, I can calculate our expected move to the upside and also our downside. So that'll give us the one standard deviation expected move. I'm also going to add where the stock close at expiration, and if the expiration is out in the future, then I'm just gonna return an A for the price at expiration. So I'll do this for all the expirations and after we make our calculations, just return the call data. Since this will get saved as a list, I need to row bind all of my results. And similarly, I'll be doing the same for the put options where I pass in the expirations. And for each, I subset our strikes that are at the money, select only these columns, calculate the expected move, return the price to expiration. After we make the calculations, just return that data. I'm also going to R bind our results. Now that we have our put options and our call options, I'm gonna row bind those and return that as a data frame. So let's go ahead and minimize this function and run it. Since this gets returned as a list, we need to row bind our results and return it as a data frame. And if we take a look at that data, so we have implied volatility, the expiration date, the strike closest to the stock close, the mid price for this option, the theta for the option, the flag, whether it's a call or a put, the number of days to expiration, the standard deviation for the expected move. So here we have the upside and the downside. And finally, where the underlying closed at expiration. So now I'm gonna calculate deciles on our implied volatility. So let's close this out. Before I run that, if you're a Patreon member, this is where you will begin to run the script. Since the options data is too big or too large of a file, I'll just go ahead and upload this data frame. All right, so on line 75 is where we calculate our deciles on our implied volatility. From here, you would select the number of days left to expiration that you wanna focus on. So for this tutorial, I'm gonna focus on 30 days left to expiration. So I'll go ahead and subset our data frame. I'm gonna add a column which will indicate whether or not the price at expiration stayed within our expected range. So if it did, it'll return a one. Otherwise, it'll return a zero. And this will be useful later on in the script. All right, so now I'm gonna separate my options that have 30 days left to expiration into deciles depending on the IV. So let's go ahead and run this block. I'm gonna combine all my deciles into QQ. We can subset our options to see which of these options close below the lower band and the upper band. So as it stands, if we take a look at sub, we have 288 different entries. But if we run one of the cases and we take a look at our console, we see that we have quite a few which close below our lower band. All right, so let's go back to our script. 
At 30 days left to expiration, I didn't have anything for the first decile. So the data starts at decile two. So we're gonna take a look at the percentage that stayed within the one standard deviation band. And we're gonna calculate the same percentage for the highest decile. And if we take a look at our console, so for the second lowest decile, 77% stayed within the one standard deviation band. And for the highest decile, it seems that all of the options stayed within the band. So let's go back to our script here. Now we're gonna compare the premiums we can get for these options. So again, comparing the lowest, which in this case is Q2 compared to the highest decile. So let's run these two lines. So on average, when the implied volatility is fairly low, we are able to get close to $6 per contract. Whereas when the implied volatility is at the highest, prices seem to have more than doubled. Now let's compare our thetas. So if we run these two last lines, and if we take a look at our console, when implied volatility is high, theta is negative 22 cents compared to only 10 cents when the implied volatility is at its lowest. And then from here, you can change the number of days left to expiration and check the results for each of these deciles. But if we take a look at Q10, which has the highest implied volatility, we see that for each of these cases, all of them stayed within this price range. So it may be worth considering selling some options above the one standard deviation and selling some puts below this lower band just to take advantage of the high implied volatility. Well guys, this concludes the video. I'll leave a link down in the description area to the Patreon where you can find the script. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.